Wow, it's so good to be here with you again. I'm Grace Rimam Nora, coming to you from Rimam Global Ministries. And um, we just want to say a big thank you to all of you for taking out time to watch this video. God bless you richly. And uh, once again, uh, we're here for our singles, on our single and satisfied edition. And we're coming to you with an interesting topic for today. Today's topic has to do with five things relationship cannot do for you. I'm sure you've been hearing the things relationship can do for you, but now we want to discuss five things relationship cannot do for you. It's very important that you listen through so that you would get some things and um, you know that unrealistic expectations can't take you. So we're going to pray before we begin this video. Father, I want to say thank you for this opportunity to be sharing your word with your people. We pray, oh God, that you will do for us what other people cannot do for us. And as we listen, we pray, oh God, that you help us to be doers of your word. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So God bless you again. Thank you for joining us. Um, I also want to appreciate those of you that have subscribed to this YouTube channel. You are too much. We appreciate you. We see you. We love you. And even those that have not yet subscribed, you are our future subscribers. We want to say thank you. Please click that button right now so that you can get more um, God-contented videos. Videos that are richly loaded with the Word of God. Okay, so I also want to thank my husband for this opportunity. I would like you to know that there are some other very wonderful episodes you would like to go back to. For instance, Five Keys for Discovering Your Purpose. It is highly recommended for every single person out there. And from my teaching today, you will understand why. And also, Side Effects of Virginity. It's a question that we have posed out there and we answered a lot on this issue of virginity you want to check out those videos and much more for the single folks out there so let's jump right in to the five things relationship cannot do for you you know most people get disappointed and they start a relationship hoping that it's going to be all that and then suddenly it just falls flat and every year you see them entering into a new relationship some are even as often as every six months you know <laughs> i don't know how whether your heart is made up of um, cement blocks or something that is so hard to be able to take all those punches but i want you to know that you don't just enter into relationship with so much expectations it's good to have expectations but there are some things that are unrealistic and those are the things we want to look at today now let's jump right to number one Number one is that relationship cannot give you joy. Relationship cannot give you joy. In fact, you will have moments of sadness. In fact, the person that hurts you the most is the person you love. And most times it's not intentional. It's not like the person starts off today and says, I'm going to hurt this person. No. You know, the person just does something different from what you believe in or what you are accustomed to. And of course, we have different backgrounds. We come from different places. So what do you expect? You just make your point clear that this, this and this and this is not what I like. But that's the truth. But the truth about it is there are times of happiness, of course, in relationship. Relationship can give you bouts of happiness, you know, times that you enjoy yourselves, you spend time together. So don't get me wrong, that is there. But joy, the definition of joy is a positive outcome. A positive outcome. Relationship cannot give you completely that positive outcome of life. So let's see where we're supposed to get it from. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Let's look at verse 22 of Galatians chapter 5. The scripture says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. So can I tell you the truth? Joy comes from having the seed of the Holy Spirit inside of you. And the seed of the Holy Spirit 
It's a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's just what we're talking about. The truth about it is that no one person can be all things to you at the same time. No one person can be all things to you at the same time. You, ex you enter into a relationship expecting that this person will both serve as a mother, a father. This person will fulfill not just parental roles in your life, will take over all your financial expectations. This person will be the one to do everything for you. But can, can I tell you the truth? No one person can be everything to you. But I can introduce you to one person that I know can be everything to you at all times. His name is I Am. He introduced himself to the children of Israel in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. When he was sending Moses on assignment. Moses said, Father, God, if they ask me who has sent me, what do I tell them? He said, tell them I am. Do you know why? I am whatever you need at that particular time of your life. I am. I am. So when you enter into a relationship hoping that the other person becomes I am to you, that is idolatry. And you will definitely be disappointed. Because when you are sick, the best the person can do for you is to keep you company. That's all. The person can't take away the sickness. So Jesus rightly says he is your healer. That's found in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5. He is your healer. I remember a story I watched. I think it's a movie, but it's a real life story. Jeremy Camp's story. And he's a musician. And he, he talked about his first love life. You know, his first wife. And they were deeply in love, I think, from college or so. And you know, the wife developed cancer. While they were still just, you know, friends and all that. She developed cancer and he was filled with pain and agony. He wished he could take the cancer upon himself. In fact, he went all the way to get married to this lady. And she spent the last few years of her life in pain, but together with Jeremy Camp. And that helped her. She had a peaceful death, you know, and then he moved on and had another wife. Can I tell you that Jeremy Camp, of course, tried his best to be there for her, but he couldn't take the cancer away. It's Jesus that is your healer. He's the one that can be your healer. Another thing he is to you, he's your provider. That's in Genesis chapter 22, verse 12 to 14, where he introduces himself as Jehovah Jireh. So please don't enter into relationship thinking that the person will meet all your needs. No, it's wrong. Number three, he is your ever-present companionship. That cannot be found in a relationship. I know the person has told you that we'll be together forever. Some people even go as far as in blood covenant, blood oaths. That is rubbish. It's not correct. That person is a human being at his best. And he has just breath in his nostrils, which can go at any time. So, but Jesus has said, he is your ever-present companion. Look at what David said so amazingly in Psalm 139 verse 8. He says, even when I make my bed in hell... You'll be there with me. There are some times when you are in a bad place. Nobody believes in you. Maybe you are, you are doing awful things. Nobody even wants to look in your direction. Jesus is still there, beckoning on you to come. You know, And he's your coach and cheerleader. That's another position that other people may try to feel, but they may not be there for you all the time. The Bible says in John chapter 14, verse 26, verse 26, the advocates, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. I don't think there's any human being that has knowledge in all things that will take that place of the Holy Spirit. So these are just but to mention a few of the things that Jesus is to you that no human being can be. So please, point number one should be well taken that no person can meet all your needs. No one person can be all things to you. So relationship won't give you that. Number two, relationship cannot make you like others. Some enter into relationship because they are comparing themselves with others. <laughs> they want to see how they can be like others. That's like peer pressure, especially teenagers. Hello, my teenage friends out there. Use this time to build yourself educationally, your relationship with God, and ask the question, Father, what would you have me do for you? That was the first question Paul asked on his way to Damascus when he encountered God. What would you have me do for you? So spend your time building yourself. In fact, statistics have shown that 
teenagers that enter into relationship early in their people that enter into relationship in their teenage years and then end up getting married you know that they have 38 percent chances of divorce after five years meaning that those relationships are not you know they, they don't have a long lasting impact why because you probably jumped into it in your youthful, your very young time when your brain is still developing and you need to take instructions from people and here you are, attaching yourself to somebody else. So please, don't compare yourself. When you see everybody being in a relationship, it doesn't mean that when you enter into a relationship, you will become like them. No. Look at what the scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Not that we dare to classify or compare ourselves with some of those who are commending themselves. But when they measure themselves by one another and compare themselves with one another, they are without understanding. Another translation says they are not wise. So please, don't out of comparison, wanting to be like others, jump into a relationship. Relationship will not make you like others. Discover your own unique identity and walk in it. Your own unique, God has a unique timing for your own life. Number three, relationship can't deal with your lustful passions. Relationship can't deal with your lustful passions. I don't care how, much, how many times you have sex with this person in a day, which is even wrong, you know. There is, the truth about it is every one of us has a normal sexual urge. It was put in there by God. You have a normal attractiveness to the opposite sex. It was put in there by God. In fact, ladies have what we call premenstrual syndrome when they feel, you know, the need to be held or, you know, to be around the opposite sex and all that. But the truth about it is that relationship will not completely take over those passions. That you are in a relationship doesn't mean all those will go away. And that you are satisfying it sexually at the wrong time is even worse. So, don't ever think that marriage or even relationship before marriage will help to tame those feelings. What will take care of those feelings is what we call self-control. It's better you develop your self-control. And even if you see somebody, you know, that is sleeping around, I like what uh, Pastor King Sokonko said. He said, a fornicator is an adult trying training. You see somebody that just sleeps around, sleeps around, and feels, ah, let me just get married. It will take care of this urges. You will see that when you get married, you're only doing rehearsal. It continues because your wife is not going to completely be there for you all the time. You know, And you always see somebody that is more attractive than your wife or you're the person you are in a relationship with. You always meet somebody that is more attractive, more intelligent, more handsome and all that. So it's, it will not completely take care of that. Look at what the scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'll just read verse 15 for the lack of time. Verse 15, the scripture says, um, Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I take the member of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Hmm. So it means that you are a member of Christ when you give your life to Christ. The moment you get sexually involved in relationships, you dismember yourself from Christ Jesus and connect with that person. And it's a very dangerous life to live. So please and please don't ever think relationship will take care of those urges. Just develop a self-control by the power of the Holy Spirit, by studying the word, spending time in prayer, and that will help you. Number four, relationship won't heal your hurting heart. Relationship won't heal your hurting heart. Some people try to heal from past relationship by jumping right into another one. It's a syndrome I call quenching fire with fire. It doesn't work that way. You need time to heal. I read of a story of a father and his son that were moving together in the forest. And they saw an animal that was trapped, you know, injured somewhere. And the son wanted to rush to go and help the animal out of the injury and out of the trap. And the father stopped him and said, my son, be careful. A, an animal that is hurt will always bite those that are around him first. So it simply means that you are trying to help that animal but because you are the closest food there he will definitely jump on you that's the same way human beings are when you are hurting you tend to hurt people unconsciously because that's what is 
going on inside of you most times we dish out what is going on inside of us so you have to first of all take out time and look to jesus and be healed jesus said in isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 he is the binder of the broken hearts he will help you if you come to him and then forgive learn to forgive you know the scripture says in luke 23 verse 24 father forgive them for they know not what they do the greatest portion of your healing comes from forgiving and forgiveness is is an action word you just decide it's a decision and then finally we'll look at this last um point that's number five relationship being in a relationship doesn't make you an expert on relationship affairs being in a relationship doesn't make you an expert in fact i, I read this quote from ideal hearts quote it says experience is the best teacher but in our day and time what we need is wisdom because wisdom overcomes experience because experience is wisdom but there is a level of wisdom that overcomes the experience and that's the experience that already lived by others i am not trying to repeat their history i already learned from what they did so we you hear that experience is the best teacher <laughs> this quote is saying that's not true wisdom is the best teacher experience is a teacher that comes late but wisdom when you learn from other people's mistakes you avoid repeating history so what am i saying when you enter into relationship in fact before you enter into relationship begin to read books read books on this subject there are scriptural quotes even on this subject don't wait till you get there but if you're already there it's still not too late I see single people, I tell them to read books on marriage and they laugh. Ah, me, I don't want all those marriage stuff. They creep me out. <laughs> this is the right time. What you are not prepared for, you are actually preparing to fail. So your lack of preparation is actually a way of preparation. So re prepare, read books, listen to messages. We have, in fact, our YouTube channel, I was just telling my husband yesterday, is like a school. If you decide to go through those messages for singles, it's like going through a school. So it's very, very important. Read books, get a mentor, get somebody that you can talk with. You are not all knowing. Somebody that has probably walked this way and God is helping such a person. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to stop here for today and I'm going to pray with you that that which relationship cannot do for you, God will do for you and that you'll be strong in your work with the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we pray together? Those that have not yet surrendered to Jesus, can you just pray with me? Say this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I surrender all to you. I'm sorry that I've been looking to the wrong places to fill this void in me. Today I've realized this void cannot be filled by anything else or anyone else. I call upon I am and I surrender my life to you. Please forgive me for all my sins. Thank you for receiving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, thank you for my beloved brothers and sisters. I pray that you take them in, into your hand and keep them and help them to know what you have called them to do and help them to depend only on you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. For in Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you for staying tuned to the end. We love you from Rima Global Ministries. We appreciate you. And we want you to subscribe to this channel so that you can get more juicy stuff. By the grace of God, you are going to be having more topics coming your way every week. And I know that you'll be blessed and share with others. God bless you. Bye.